into that. That was so cool. But we still miss them. Um, but these, it's just, it's, it's amazing what they do. But we know we got a new one up there back in the, he's in black, back in the corner doing percuss, percussion stuff. Is that what that's called? Yeah, doing a great job. That's Richard back there. He's also going to be running our diving deeper. Jonathan's back. Uh, we missed him. And we got a gimpy kid over here named Anthony. And he's taken Justin's place for three weeks. Three, three weeks, weeks three and weeks, then, and uh, yeah, we'll schooling. see. But wow, that's just amazing. You know, this week, I was, we were with friends uh, last night talking, and I said, you know, they said, how's your week? I said, you know, this week's been, it's been kind of a struggle. It's just, it's, it's been hard to, to have confidence in myself. There's just been stuff going on. It's been crazy week. And I, somebody tonight, David asked me, how was your week? I said, you know, it, it seemed like it was crazy. But when I think back through my week, I didn't do anything that I don't normally do. I couldn't put my finger on it. I've talked to people this week that said struggles, just going through some muck. But I've also talked to people that's going through some glorious times. And, they, and their, their life is in the best, best place it's ever been. And, and the thing I know tonight standing here is God's in both of those lives. He's here in the bad, but he's also the reason for the good. So I found a prayer tonight that I read once. I try not to repeat too often. Uh, and I thought when I saw this, oh, I already read it. And I realized I read it one year ago in two days. I read it October of last year. This prayer is from the 19th century. And I love this prayer because it tells us that our God was good then and our God is good now. So let's, let's go to prayer. O oh Lord God, the watchers of Zion have called peace, peace, when there is no peace. Where, wherefore have you so long withheld from us the influence of your Holy Spirit? Why have you hardened our hearts, Lord? It is because we have honored you with our lips when our hearts were far from you. Return again to us, O Lord God, and pardon this inequity of your servants. Cause your faith to shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O visit us with your salvation. Raise up sons and daughters from Abraham and Sarah, and grant that there might come a mighty shaking of dry bones among us, and a great ingathering of souls. Be pleased to grant that the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ may be built up that all nations and kindreds and tongues and peoples might be brought to the knowledge of truth and we may at last meet around your throne and join in celebrating your praises. Amen. Hello, everybody take a seat. Wow, what a great night. What a great night. Tore it up. Go, hit it. Oh, wow. So much fun. I just, Dale, you're right. I just love, I can't imagine being anyplace else. It's, this is just a, so cool to see everybody uh, to catch up for the week. Some of you guys I see throughout the week. Uh, but yeah, it's just fun. Dale mentioned Play It Back. We did our first one. Well, actually, I guess it's our second one this past Monday, and we're going to do another one uh, this Monday. So yeah, join us at 6 o'clock on Mondays. Uh, join us. Uh, share it. Rapid fire the likes and hearts of people out there know that we're here. Uh, that, that, that we're here and we want them to be a part of our family. Hello, Facebook back there. We love the fact that you're joining us. Uh, Kimmy was going to play a video, but evidently there was some malfunction. I don't know what that was. But Carrie was here last week and talked about our new subsplash, uh, being able to give online. And that goes for all you guys too. Kimmy, that's, what, that's how we do it because I never remember uh, to give, the, you know, bring a check or bring money or whatever. So we just give online and it does it automatically. So check that out. Go to FUMC... Where's Kimmy at? I lost her. What, what's the website? F-U-M-C. Tracy, what's the website? ClaremoreFUMC.org. Download the app from the App Store. Download the app from the App Store. What's the app? ClaremoreFUMC. ClaremoreFUMC App Store. Is, there, is that clear as mud? Already downloaded. J Talk to him. He's already done it. J-Rod's already done it. Talk to him. But I, it's a fantastic way to not just give online, but also to, I mean, it does all kinds of stuff. We see our messages on there. You, all the stuff that we share is on there, and it's just a, it's a fantastic thing. Next week, we'll have the video back for you. Dale mentioned diving deeper, starting tonight in the Children's Center, huh? Amen. Wow. 
That is unbelievable, dude. I can't believe it's finally here. And I got one more thing before we get started. Loads of love. Collection is done. We won. I told you we ain't losing. I am so proud of this campus. I am so proud of you guys because, not because of the dollar amount, because of the love that you have for people you haven't even met. That is a sign of a, of a true worship com a community. And I am so glad to be a part of that. And I'm so glad to be able to brag to Ray Crawford that we beat them. Uh, heaven, please, Lord, forgive me, but loads of love. But it's not done. It's not done. We have uh, next Saturday, week from today, 11? Yeah, 11 o'clock is the official start. But if be there early if you can. Yeah, we're going to be cooking broths or burgers or something. I don't know. We're cooking something food out there, and we got coupons getting made. We need feet on the ground now. Uh, so we've got a sign-up sheet out there that it, and you only need for an hour. If you've got an hour next Saturday morning or afternoon, go sign up so that Kira and the, and the Be the Change committee know that they're going to have plenty of people there because this isn't just about doing laundry or paying for laundry. It's also about talking to people, people that may just want to say hi, may just want to find someone that can give them some hope. This is a great opportunity to do that. So please talk to Lee at the Yes Desk and let's, let's rock and roll. Okay, connected by the Spirit. <laughs> We talked about this one this morning at the men's thing, which is here, and which is going to end up being down there too, but we get coffee. If you ever want to have some fun, come and see us at the, at the men's breakfast, or men's coffee, which we're going to start doing breakfast as soon as the kitchen's done, uh, once a month. But yeah, come and check it out. It's a ton of fun. Uh, but we've been talking to kingdom values. Uh, we've been talking about needing to shift them back. We've been stepping on some toes, haven't we? Well, I... Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to even tell you what today's about, so I'm going to go right into it because I'm afraid you guys might leave if I tell you what we're talking about, uh, and I might go with you <laughs> if that's okay. But C.S. Lewis says, "Everyone says forgiveness is a lovely idea until they have something to forgive." Huh? Yeah, we're talking forgiveness, people. We're talking forgiveness, and I'm going to read. I haven't done this often. I'm going to read the very first paragraph out of the book from James Merritt. Pay attention, this is really good. No virtue will test your character like forgiveness. Mm. This is true regardless of whether you are the one who needs to forgive or the one who needs forgiveness. We've all been there. Both sides of that. Forgiving someone who has wounded us is difficult, but asking forgiveness from those who have wounded may be even harder. We think forgiveness is a great idea if we are the ones who need it, but not so great if we are the ones that have to give it. Mm. That, is, uh, that says a lot, forgiveness. Unforgiveness, carrying a grudge. Carrying a grudge, anybody done that? Any, <laughs> I see a lot of hands out there. Carrying a grudge, literally, literally carrying weight. The weight of a grudge. The book calls it invisible backpacks. I love that analogy because it's weight no one else, no one else can see. Speaking of no one seeing, we're going to try to fix this real quick. So keep going. Oh, okay. What are we fixing? <laughs> Dude, you're freaking me the out. The lights that are blinking. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. The weight of the <laughs> invisible backpack. Man, I'm so flustered right now. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Are we flashing on We're me or something? To fix these so no one has a seizure. Oh, okay. All right, all right. I'm, I'm back. Okay. Invisible backpacks. Being filled with bitterness. Bitterness that no one else can see. Has anybody ever... Do, well, I don't, I, this would be interesting to me. I don't know if... It, does anybody in here know anybody that's climbed Mount Everest? Raise your... I mean, I don't know anybody. <laughs> You've climbed, yeah, yeah, J-Rod's climbed it. Uh, it's a big deal if you climb Mount Everest. I mean, I, I, there's a, there's a list. I think you can look up a list and find the people that have climbed, climbed it or find the people that let there be some light. Uh, wow, I can see you guys. This is the first time in months I've been able to see anybody up here. Um, but people that climb Mount Everest, are, are they, they're well known. People know the names of the people that climb Mount Everest. But what people don't know is there a, there's a guy or a person 
that carries their junk up the mountain with them. They're called Sherpas. Sherpas are from that area. I'm getting a lot of heads. You guys have heard of Sherpas. They don't get any glory. But they weigh about 125, 130 pounds is what the average weight of a Sherpa is. And they're carrying packs of about 140 pounds right beside the guy all the way to the top. That's a lot of weight. That's a lot of weight for them to carry. Friends, I got one. The first question I have for you tonight, how much weight are you willing to carry? How much weight do you carry on a daily basis because you refuse to forgive? How much weight do we carry on our backs because we're so mad, we're so hurt that we refuse to forgive? How much of that do we have? There's a story in the book of a lady that was dying, and the doctor gave her her prognosis that she was she wasn't going to make it. They didn't have a cure. It's been a while back. They, they didn't have a cure for her. So she asked the doctor for a pad and paper uh, and a pencil, and he gave it to her, and he left the room. Um, he got, came back an hour later. She's still writing. He said, man, is that, you, you, is that your will? No. Are you, are you writing uh, to ask forgiveness from people? No. Are you writing people to tell them you forgave them? No. He said, well, what, what's taking so long? She said, I'm, I'm, writing, I'm writing a list of all the people that I'm going to bite because she'd been prognosed with rabies. <laughs> Second question tonight. How many of us in this room have that list? How many people do we think of in our past and in our lives from last week or 20 years ago or from high school that we'd want to bite? We still carry that weight. Well, there's one thing I'm not going to do tonight because um, I can't say it with a straight face, but I'm not going to pretend it's easy. I'm not going to try to pretend that it's quick. You say it, it's done, right? And I'm sorry. I I'm sorry and then it's over with. Or I accept your apology and it's over with. It's quick, right? It's easy if it's coming from the right place, right? No. It's not. I think we have to, before we could even talk about forgiveness, we have to realize there's all different levels of hurt. Cutting me off in traffic, I can probably forgive you for that pretty quick. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but being hurt by someone or watching someone hurt a loved one, that's a different kind of pain. And it's a different kind of weight. Or being hurt by someone you love can be a whole new level of forgiveness. The difficulty of forgiveness can depend on the level of hurt, how deep the wound is. Amen. But either way, no matter how deep it is, it's still a process. It's a process. It's not quick. Forgiveness is said, but forgiveness is also done. It's an action. It's an action. And at times, actually most of the time, it's more of a process, and that's okay. We get hung up on things, and we have to get things done fast. That's how humans think. We want to get things done quick. Okay, I apologize. I can check that off my box. But then it gets fired right back up again next time we see that person or next time we think of that situation. It's okay if we got to do it over and over and over again, even for the same offense. I'm going to read a scripture real quick. This is Matthew 18, 21 through 22. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. It's okay if you got to forgive them over and over and over again. It's okay not to just say it and be done. 
it might take 77 times. But friends, it is not okay. It is not okay to not do it at all. I'm going to go back to scripture. I read on 1823 through 35. Therefore, the king, this is Jesus talking. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him again, began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw that what happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all the debt of yours because you begged me to. Listen to this. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he, until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Unless you forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. That comes from our Savior. Friends, it does not say. I'll read again if you need me to. It does not say from your heart when they ask you to. It does not say from your heart when they deserve it. Or when they have forgiven you. It does not say from your heart when you figured out why they did it to you at all. It just says from your heart. It just said from your heart. Friends, we need to forgive people. Listen to this. This is so hard. We need to forgive people that don't care. Amen. We've got to forgive them anyway. Amen. We need to forgive people that don't know. We forgive them anyway. Even the people, and this is maybe the hardest, even the people that don't want it. I've had to forgive people that have looked me in the eyes and say, I don't want your forgiveness. We forgive them anyway. That's what that scripture is telling us. We got to forgive them Anyways, and the reason we won't need to forgive them anyways because our Lord tells us to, but friends, just a bigger reason is that is they're not carrying the burden. You are. Your unforgiveness does not weight them down. It weights you down. They don't carry that invisible backpack because of how you feel. And with that weight, with that bitterness, with that unforgiveness that you're carrying, you can never be free. Amen. Remember last week we talked about controlling ourselves. How if, if we're not controlling ourselves then we're captive to something. And as long as we're captive to something, we cannot be free. Well, bitterness, my friends, bitterness. Not being able to let go of something means we are being controlled by vengeance instead of being freed by forgiveness or grace. October 2nd, 2006, in West Nickel Mines, Pennsylvania, Charles Carl Roberts. I don't know if any, that name sounds familiar to anybody, but Charles Carl Roberts walked into a one-class schoolhouse in Nickel, in, in, I'm sorry, in West Nickel Mines, Pennsylvania, and took 13 young Amish girls, ages from 6 to 13, hostage. 
And as the police were surrounding it and they were in, um, trying to negotiate with them, he shot eight of them, killing six, and then killed himself. At, in the aftermath of this, his wife came forward with a note, suicide note that Charles Roberts had written. And the reason he had went on a rampage is because he couldn't forgive himself for something he had done to some kids years before that, and he couldn't forgive God because his, in, because his infant daughter had died, and he never could get over it. His unforgiveness cost him and six young girls their life. That burden was so heavy, his backpack weighed down so much that seven, of, or I'm sorry, six of God's children were taken. The most amazing part of that story is I realized I didn't even know that that's why he did this. I remember this happening, but I didn't realize that's what it was, that it was about his daughter dying or about something he had done as a kid and the forgiveness of self. I read this story because the most important, the most amazing part of the story, there's a reporter there at the funeral uh, for this man, Charles, or yeah, Charles Roberts. And this reporter had reported on Columbine, and he had reported on 9-11. But he said at the funeral of this man, this killer, who we call a psychopath, at that funeral, one of the most amazing things he's ever saw, one of the most moving things he'd ever saw, was the love and grace extended by the Amish. There were over 30 people from the Amish community, which included the victim's parents, attended that funeral to mourn his death, to mourn with his family, and to tell them that they were forgiven, that they forgave this man for what he had done. They had already started the process. Friends, they started the process immediately. They started forgiving immediately. They emptied their backpacks that day. They didn't just say it. They did it. <laughs> and they did it before they really understood why. They did it before they knew about the letter. They did it before they come out for what happened. They did it before they knew he was mentally unstable. Forgiveness doesn't mean we got to figure out why. So often we think that. I do. How can I forgive Dan if I don't even know why he did it to me? We don't have to figure out why. They did it before they even knew why. We were talking in the meeting about the, the definition of forgiveness. And the book, I love this, Archibald Hearts defined forgiveness like this, giving up my right to hurt you for hurting me. <laughs> that sounds easy. It's giving up my right to hurt you back. I have been up at night trying to figure out how to hurt someone back. I'm getting hands again. Forgiveness is figuring out how to quit trying I heard him back. Hmm. I'm writing this message, and, I'm, and I, I had to put this in there twice. I'm not going to pretend for even a second that forgiveness isn't hard. Forgiveness is actually messy. I've seen families destroyed over lack of forgiveness. I've seen friendships ruined because of bitterness. I have done that. It can be messy. It can take time. It could take decades. Remember, 77 times, 70 times 7. It's okay if it takes a while. It's a process. It's hard work. It's ugly. I've gotten to the point in my life where I think I've forgiven them. I've gotten over it, and I see them, and it starts all over again. This week, I was talking to my wife, Kimmy, about some forgiveness that she needs to do. She goes, oh, no, I've gotten over that. <laughs> I said, really? She said, yeah, I'm over that. I'm not, I'm not mad anymore. I, I've gotten over it. I said, well, well, and I went through some facts. <laughs> 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 but 
by the time the conversation was over, she admitted she hadn't gotten over it. That's the good part. The bad part was I realized I hadn't either. <laughs> I hadn't forgiven him yet either. So be careful when you're having a conversation trying to point something out to somebody. You might end up looking in the mirror. Trying to hurt him back. It could be exhausting, can it? Anybody here ever gotten beat up, bloodied up, black eyes, tired, exhausted, and you got nowhere worth forgiving? Anybody done that? Because I've done that. It's ugly. But then I look at the other side of that. At least for me. I took a minute and I looked at unforgiveness. I've looked at, at how much time I've spent unforgiving somebody. I've looked at how much effort I put into and how much more weight I've carried being bitter. Not not willing to forgive, looking for revenge, using every piece of energy in my body to figure out how to hurt him back. How to get back at him. Waiting for karma to attack. Come on, God. You know what they did. I know you're going to pay them back, but just make sure I see it. I want to make sure I'm a part of it if I can. B, and in some cases, I want them to know it. Am I hitting home with anybody? <laughs> Making my list, writing my list of who I'm going to bite. Friends, that's even more exhausting. It's even more tiresome. Messy. I saw in a movie one time, a long time ago, where it, it said uh, a mom, a son was talking to the mother, and I believe it was the mother of Martin Luther King, and the son was saying, why aren't you mad? They killed your husband. Why aren't you mad? Why don't you hate them? And she looked at him, and he, she said, you know, son, 80% of the people you hate don't know it. The 20% of the people that do don't care. So the only person I'm hurting is me. What's no different with forgiveness? Unforgiveness is so exhausting. And in times, it's even more messy than forgiving. Friends, it's imprisonment. I have been locked up with bitterness before because I'm not willing to forgive. I'm not willing to get over it. But when I have... When I have forgiven, as hard as it's been, as messy and ugly as it get, it sets you free. It sets you free. Free from that, go ahead, Ross, if you're up there. Free from that invisible backpack. I'm all miscombobulated because the lights are... My, does my skin look pasty? <laughs> I'm used to having purple lights on me or something. It is nice to be able to see you guys, though. It's awesome. We need to start in our life tonight. We need to start facing what we're carrying got to admit it. This week, Kim would admit that she was still carrying it. Friends, I didn't even know I was carrying it. And we're never going to know unless we face it. We've got to admit it. That's humbling. We got to start. We got to start forgiving who we want to bite. We got to start forgiving the people that we're making a list to bite them. We got to start forgiving the people that don't know it. Forgiveness is a choice. It's your choice. No one else's.
We got to start forsaking the wrongdoing. We got to tear it up. This is where it becomes hard. We got to tear it up and we, and we got to bury it and we got to forget where we put it so we can never go back. So we never go back. I had a friend <laughs> this week was telling me about a, a family member that had loaned him money years ago, or he had loaned money years ago. He never got paid back and the feelings were hurt and there were some problems. And he said, man, I was over. I forgave him. We we're talking about this subject, by the way. I forgave him. He hadn't seen him in years. He buried it. But he didn't forget where he put it because this past two weeks ago, he was at a family function and it boiled right back up again. He had to start over. He had to forgive him all over again. Tear it up so we can't go back. I want to tell you something that goes back to our scripture that hit home with me this week because I think when I, when I was reading the scripture, I said, remember this. This is what I was talking about. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ came here 2,000 years ago to forgive us with his blood. I didn't ask for that. Amen. I sure didn't deserve it. And in some weird way, I didn't want it. Heck, I didn't even know I needed it. But friends, he did it anyway. We had a God 2,000 years ago that forgave us with his own son. And again, we didn't ask. We didn't deserve it. We didn't want it. And in some cases, to this day, we still don't accept it. But he did it anyway. Mm. Friend, God has never asked me, and he's never asked you to do anything that he hasn't already done. God also knew that all these values we've been talking about for the last six, seven weeks, and we're going to talk for the next four or five weeks. Please come back because I know this is hard sometimes. Uh, seem hard, impossible at times. But he knew that, so he sent us the Holy Spirit which provides us with the power. Think about that. The Holy Spirit provides us with the power to forgive anyway. Amen? Let's go to the uh, Lord in silence. Father, 2,000 years ago, you forgave us with your blood. <laughs> we didn't ask for it. In some cases, we didn't even know we needed it. We sure didn't deserve it, but you did it anyway. We have things in our life that are eating us alive. We have burdens on our backs that we can't get rid of and in some cases don't even know they're there. We need your help. We need you to pick us up and show us and teach us how to forgive them anyway. Guide us. Teach us to listen to the Holy Spirit you already provided. us that we don't have to prove anything to you.
You've never asked us to do anything that you haven't already done. I'm just asking for help. Help us to forgive anyway. In your great name, amen.